Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. The number of wounded citizens in the booby-trapped car explosion in Be'er al -Abed in the southern suburb of Beirut has risen to more than 38. The car that exploded was parked near the Islamic Cooperation Center. Huge material damage was inflicted on neighboring buildings, and several cars that were in the area were burned down. Head of the National Security and Foreign Policy Committee at the Iranian Shura Council, Ala Adin Brujerdi, had reiterated his country's emphasis on the need of reaching a political solution to the crisis in Syria through dialogue among all parties, ruling out any military solution to the crisis. In a statement, Brujerdi also stressed the other countries' support for dialogue between the Syrian government and the opposition instead of intervention in Syrian affairs. He referred to the failure of foreign players like the USA and its allies, including Turkey, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia, and warned against the attempt of these states to influence the political scene on the Syrian arena through allowing the convention of meetings by the opposition. On the situation in Egypt, the Iranian official said, the known extremist side should not be allowed to take Egypt to regretful events like those that are happening in Syria and Iraq. He expressed his country's hope that Egypt would overcome the current crisis and place its nationalist interests on the top of its priorities in order to safeguard Egyptian national security. Concerning allegations by the French Foreign Ministry over Iran's interference in Syria, in addition to the statements by the French President Holland that welcome Iran's participation in the conference set to be held in Geneva to resolve the crisis in Syria, Iranian Foreign Ministry spokesman Abbas Araqshi asserted that his country's stances are clear and firm since the beginning of the crisis in Syria, pointing out that the reactions of the Western countries following the election of President Hassan Rouhani were contradictory because of the lack of proper and objective analysis about the nature of Iran and its stances towards international issues, including the crisis in Syria. Under the title Sustainable Security 92, Iranian Navy forces started five-day training maneuvers in the Caspian. Emirat Khardad Hakimi, commander of the military fleet north of Iran, said that the maneuvers will be carried out in the Iranian regional waters, especially in the harbors of Astara, Nushahar, Ansley, and Amir Abad, pointing out that the navigation and the maneuvers that provide a suitable environment to prepare the forces to join the Navy fleet. Hakimi said that the cadres of this force receive training in the cities of Kilan and Mazendran, while Manjil Center is to prepare part of the cadres for the Navy forces south of the country. Welcome back. A military source said that units of the Syrian Arab army restored security and stability to the area of the Silos and the surrounding hills near the towns of Kafaroma and Heish in Ma'abit and Norman countryside of Idlib. In Homs countryside, Syrian Arab army clashed with terrorist armed groups that were trying to flee across Al Buqia plain east of Tel Kalakh towards the Lebanese territories, killing many terrorists and injuring the rest of them. Syrian Arab army units also clashed with armed terrorist groups between the villages of Al Naamie and Sadad east of Homs, killing two terrorists, arresting the third, and seizing a vehicle carrying various kinds of weapons. Meanwhile, Syrian Arab army eliminated terrorist gatherings in the towns of al Hassan and western Tiba in al Hule, killing many of them and injuring others. In Homs, our armed forces continue to target terrorist gatherings in Arrastan, killing the leader of a terrorist gang called Abed Hassan Abed, nicknamed Abu Layth, Musa Khalid, and Mustafa Shmer. In Babhud neighborhood, the army has found a tunnel linking Jurat al Shayyah with other neighborhoods in ancient Homs.
Sources and the American national security have disclosed the obstruction by the American Congress committees of the American administration's plan to send weapons to what the so-called opposition fighters in Syria as they reach al-Qaeda-linked gangs. The sources added that the Congress committees have temporarily frozen the financing of arms shipments to be sent to the armed groups in Syria. The intelligence committees at the Congress have voiced their dissatisfaction over the plan, the details of which they were briefed by Kerry. They also expressed their reservation at the Obama administration's intention to send military equipment to those gangs. Both the Democrats and the Republicans at the committees voiced concern that such weapons would reach the terrorist Jabhat al-Nusra organization in Syria. According to the Congress regulations, the American administration would not be able to arm the Syrian opposition if one of the Congress intelligence committees opposed the plan. The Levant Country's Islamic Scholars Federation has said that the Tunisian president's decision to depose the Mufti of Tunisia, Sheikh Uthman Batiq, is part of the latter's stand against takfiri calls and whatever has to do with terrorism against Syria, as well as for his adherence to Islamic Sharia provisions. The Federation added that deposing the Mufti of Tunisia is a very serious step in compliance with extremist calls and foreign pressures. This step, the Federation went on, must be immediately abrogated in the interest of Tunisia, the Tunisian people, Islam, and Muslims. Finally, following the horrible massacre in front of the Republican Guards House in Egypt, which claimed the lives of 54 persons and wounded more than 500, calm prevailed at Tahrir Square yesterday. The Central Security Forces and the People's Committees secured the entrances and exits of the square as the Egyptian Army Forces deployed several of tanks at Al-Aruba Street Tunnel and Al-Mirghani Street, as well as in front of the first and second gates of Al-Tihadiyya Presidential Palace. The Suez Governorate, on the other hand, witnessed huge marches in support of the Egyptian Army and in protest against the Muslim Brotherhood's attempts to attack the Republican Guards. Meanwhile, the provisional Egyptian president, Adli Mansour, has issued a constitutional declaration authorizing him to issue laws after consulting with the new government. The declaration has set a date for the parliamentary elections to be conducted in six months and to be followed by presidential elections two months later. The declaration also stipulates the formation of the Constitutional Society in two weeks to introduce amendments into the Constitution in the course of four months. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.